Welcome everyone. This is a session about content strategy for Drupal.org um, and I will talk about why we needed to develop content strategy in the first place, what we did, what were our main findings and recommended changes for the site, how we are implementing those changes and how you can help us do it, maybe, if you want to. Um, there will be just a little bit of theory about what content strategy is, like one slide, not more. Uh, and I've done this session before at Los Angeles, so for people who were there, it's mostly the same. There will be some updates on the progress on implementation in the end. So let's start with why. Um, Drupal the Torch is 13 years old by now, and its visual look and size and feature set evolved over the years. You can see some of the steps on this journey. Uh, the current design is based on branding and design work done by Mark Bolton and Lisa Reichelt in 2008, which was a great work, and it was also done over six years ago. So in the meantime, the website kept growing and changing, and at some point it became obvious that the change is needed. Now, Drupal.org is not really a typical website. It is really one of the largest and oldest continuously operating Drupal websites in the world. And until recently, it was also mostly maintained and built by community volunteers. A few of them are in the room. Thank you for doing that. Um, so after years of organic growth, the amount of content we have is really huge. Not many people realize quite how huge it is. We have 1.2 million pieces of content. We have 29,000 projects, almost 800,000 issues, and over 300,000 forum posts. The amount of different audiences we have is also impressive, uh, from designers and developers to project managers, uh, marketing professionals, technical writers, trainers, decision makers, all different kinds of people come to, to Drupal.org. And they also range widely in their level of experience, knowledge of Drupal, knowledge of Drupal ecosystem. In addition to all of that complexity, the tools website provides are also quite diverse and complex. In one way or another, we do provide tools similar to that of Stack Exchange, Jira, GitHub, Wikipedia, meetup.com, showca Drupal Showcase, Mozilla.org, etc., and all of that in one single website. So when Again, just to reiterate, this is huge and complex. So when Drupal Association staff and Drupal Dator content working group members started talking about a possible redesign, given the complexity of the task, we figured out that a simple visual refresh, refresh wouldn't really help much if we change a few colors and some fonts here and there. Like, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. Uh, what we really needed to do is almost deconstruct the website and rebuild it again to make it relevant for the next stage of Drupal journey. So where do you even start doing something big like that? Um, some people might have different ideas. We decided to start with user research. So we've done it uh, last summer. It was performed by Drupal Association staff, a few community volunteers, and we had help from Whitney Hess, user experience coach, uh, I hope you saw her keynote last Drupal, uh, DrupalCon in Los Angeles. It was really interesting. If you didn't, you can watch online. Uh, so as a result of that project, we developed a set of user personas for the site. I won't talk m too much about them. They all are published, so if you follow the URL, you can read uh, in detail about them. So at that point, we knew sort of who our users are and their needs. How do we give them the content they need? To answer that question, we partnered up with Forum One, and we spent a few months figuring out content strategy for the website. Here are some of the pictures from our uh, kickoff workshop in Portland, which was a lot of fun. This is the only slide about theory. <laughs> so there are many different uh, definitions of what content strategy is. One of the most popular is this one by Christina Halverson. Uh, content strategy plans for the creation, publication, and governance of useful and usable content. Um, that's a big definition, and in, it encompasses many, many different things. And really, every content strategy project is different based on what are the actual problems you're trying to solve for your particular website. 
So some people might expect me to talk right now about like messaging framework, voice and tone, style guide, that sort of thing, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, because Drupal.org is so huge and has such long history and such a huge amount of user-generated content, for our project, we mostly focused on things like how do we produce and store high-quality content? What are the actual content types and fields we need? How do we organize this content and make sure it is findable? How it is governed? Uh, that sort of thing. So that will be mostly what I will be talking about today. So first, uh, we looked at the existing content types and how they are used on the site right now. From the user research, we had a list of what we called areas of user activity, which are essentially uh, big groups of tasks people perform on the website. Uh, and we mapped all of the existing content types to those areas. And you can see what we got. Um, you will notice that book page content type is quite heavily used all over the place. Uh, the same goes for forum pages, same goes for user groups. At the same time, uh, for some areas, there are no sufficient tools or content types at all. For example, if you look under project management or search and discovery, um, those were the problems we found. Now, if we take a deeper look at some of the overused content types, uh, for example, book pages. Uh, book pages are really used for many, many different things. They're used for general documentation, such as understanding Drupal, uh, multilingual guide, etc. They're used for project-specific documentation, how to use views or whatever module. They're used for tutorials and step-by-step -step how to guides. Uh, they're used for things what we call community instructions, which is mostly getting involved guide, you know, how to create your account, how to use IRC, how to upload a patch, uh, that sort of thing. They're used for marketing content, and sometimes they're even used to uh, organize and try to communicate the status of the initiative people run, which is like really hard to do with the book page. If you look at forums, a uh, similar thing. They are used for obviously support. They used a lot for that, but also they're used for official news and announcements, the ones you can see on the front page, for example. They all are forum posts. For community posts, for security advisors, not many people realize security advisors, which you see are actually forum posts behind the scenes. Um, they're also used for case studies, uh, events, general group discussions, and even Drupal services. We have places where people like, look for vendors to help with their projects and that sort of thing. Uh, if you look at user groups, they're also used quite heavily for many things. There are um, announcement-only groups, sort of lockdown groups such as core and governance, because people had no other place to use for announcements, so they had to create these groups. Uh, they're used for project-based groups, so some people organize work around contributed projects, such as um, rules of Panopoly, for example, in a group on groups that Drupal.org. Uh, working group, groups and initiatives, such as mobile and multilingual initiatives for Drupal core, have groups. Uh, obviously, there are local user groups, groups for city or region or country, etc., and uh, various interest groups um, for software and non-software interests. Some are very exciting, like knitting and stuff. Um, so what we see overall uh, is that a single content type is often used for too many different use cases, and each one of those requires different layouts, different permission structure, different fields. Uh, at the same time, we see that a single use case is often met by multiple different uh, content types in different locations, which makes it really, really hard for users, especially newcomers and learners, to know which is the right place for this thing they're trying to do. Um, and in addition to all of that, there are some user needs which we uncovered during user research for which we don't even have any uh, specific content types right now. So. Looking at all of that, we got very excited, obviously, and we started brainstorming all the various wonderful content types we could create, and like we had huge spreadsheets, and they kept growing, and at some point we started worrying that it's like too much. <laughs> you don't actually need hundreds of content types to try and meet different use cases for different personas. So what we did next, uh, we looked at how the content is organized and structured to see if there is any room for improvement. And we did find a few things, obviously. Uh, so first of all, 
Uh, content on Drupal.org right now is organized by content type, not by persona or by user task or by anything. So for issues, you go here. For book pages, over here. Case studies are in this corner, and forum posts are over here. Uh, the problem with that is that users don't really think in terms of forum pages or book pages. Um, instead, they might think, well, I want to know what is the status of this core initiative. Well, the answer can be, on groups that Drupal the talk, it can be in the meta issue somewhere, it can be on a book page, it can be even on an external website, uh, which makes it really hard for people to find things because they don't know what is the right place to look for something. The next problem uh, is that a piece of content on Drupal the talk is generally only displayed in one place on the site. So when you look at something, you don't see all the other pieces of content related to, to this one, its context. This makes it really hard to naturally discover other sections and parts of the site and relevant content for what you're looking at. So generally, right now, Drupal Talk users uh, land on a page either via search or by following the very common habit in our community by memorizing the, the URL and actually typing it into a browser to get somewhere, <laughs> which is uh, not ideal. So the third big problem uh, is that primary ways of structuring content on Drupal.org are right now custom-coded horizontal menus or book hierarchy. And both of them have limitations. Um, the main problem of custom-coded horizontal menus is obviously that they are custom-coded and they are horizontal. Uh, because they're custom-coded, if you want to change a menu item, you actually need to make a commit to Git and deploy a new version of module in production just to change one menu item. Um, because they're horizontal, it also limits the number of menu items you can have and how long they can be until they start breaking things. The book hierarchy, on the other hand, um, creates books that include so many contents sometimes that it's not really usable, if you, as you can see in this example. Um, this also is problematic because sometimes books uh, include content oriented on absolutely different audiences. For example, Getting Involved Guide is a good example of collection of stuff for different people. Uh, lastly, we have very flat permission structure. Because there is no organization structure beside the content type, right now permission system is pretty flat. Either everyone can edit and create content of specific type, or a group of people can based on user role. Assigning a number of people to a number of pages to maintain them uh, is not really possible. And moreover, to limit access to some pages, we have to do uh, not typical solutions, such as we have a special input filter to lock some pages from being editable by any person on the site, which is not ideal. So our findings can be summarized to two uh, actionable items, really. We need to separate content from structure. We need to have content types, which are used only to create content, and we, we need to use different means to bring structure to this content. Uh, and we need to structure content around user tasks. So instead of having five different places about a thing, we would have one place about a thing with five different content types available, depending on, on what is the type of content you're trying to create or find. Um, so separating content from structure and structuring content around user tasks. Now I will talk a bit about our plans, how we can achieve this on Drupal.org. Separating content from structure. Uh, we will do this, as I said, by having a set of generic content types, which, are, which will have specific clear use case for them. They will be used to create content, and other means will bring structure around that content. So here you can see our planned uh, new content model for Drupal.org. The green boxes are new content types, which currently do not exist at all. Uh, yellow boxes are content types which do exist, but they will be changed slightly, perhaps uh, field change or display mode change, things like that. And gray boxes are content types which exist and we're not going to touch them, they are sort of fine. Um, so on the left, you can see basic content types. They are the generic things which will be used to, for content creation. Very simple use case for each. If you want to create static 
information, you use page. If you want to create dynamic content with comments and discussion, you use post. If you want to announce event, you use event. If you want to document software, you use documentation. In the middle, you can see uh, group content types. So those are content types we'll use to bring structure to things. So basic content types can be created inside of all those groups. In some cases, group content types also can be created inside of each other, which is a little bit inception, and I will talk about it later. On the right, uh, you can also see a list of helper content types. Uh, they are mostly not user-generated, uh, so we kind of separated them. And also entity types we have, such as uh, user profiles, commits, uh, etc. Now, let's talk a little bit more about group content types, because they are sort of the most interesting ones. Uh, so projects as groups. Um, this is not really a new idea. We talked about it a few years uh, before. By turning projects into groups will give maintainers much better tools to manage their projects. They will be able to create things like posts, roadmaps, maybe announcements inside of a group. They will be able to announce sprints if they need to um, create official project documentation connected to this project. Uh, other people will be able to follow the project and receive notifications about uh, new content being created. How awesome is that? Um, another idea is uh, organizations as groups. Uh, we do have organization pages on Drupal.org right now. They are fairly simple. By turning them into groups, we again will give companies much better tools to manage their presence on the website. So. Perhaps they will have better layouts. Uh, they might be able to create some additional pieces of content inside of organizations, such as post uh, announcement. Multiple people will be able to edit organization, which will make it easier when some people leave the company and then no one can actually right now uh, touch the page, etc. One of the biggest advantages, though, is that they will be able to manage people who are listed as a staff member members, because right now, essentially, any user on Drupal.org can claim they work for any company, which is uh, not ideal. Uh, the next example are initiatives. This is a completely new content type we are thinking about. Uh, the main idea behind it is to give tools to community members to manage large initiatives. So they will be able to create, uh, say, events, posts, and pages inside of the initiative. And they will be able to relate some other content types to the initiative, such as projects and issues. And the relationship will go both ways. So uh, one initiative can span multiple projects, and one project can be related to multiple initiatives. Um, this will give leads of those initiatives ability to actually show what the work is and what the progress is. Here are 20 issues, which is the scope of the initiative. Here are the five we're working on right now. Here are the five, our next priority, that sort of thing. Right now, issue queues don't really let us do it easily. It's sort of just a list of issues. You can't drag and drop them around. Uh, so those were some of the examples of uh, group content types. Our uh, second recommendation was to structure content around user tasks. Uh, this means we will create a sections on the site around user activity. We took the areas of user activity I mentioned earlier and we combined them with the current Drupal.org sitemap and things we already have. And we got this set of potential uh, sections. You will see the circles have different size. They're sort of relative to the size of the section. So some of them will be fairly small and simple, and some of them will be really huge and uh, complicated. Each section will have a purpose and an audience defined, and each section will have primary owner and a set of roles for users who can create or edit content inside of the section. And sometimes it will mean that any user on the site can create any content in a particular section, which is fine if that's what we want to do. Um, so these sections will make up the top level of Drupal.org sitemap. And essentially, every piece of content on the site will be inside of one of these. The only content which will really live outside of everything will be things like uh, terms of service, privacy policy, um, site-wide contact form. And that's about it. Now, we have so many sections. I can't really talk about all of them. Otherwise, it will take too much time. Uh, I, do, I will give a few examples just to show you sort of what we're imagining to see inside of a section. 
So for example, why Drupal? Uh, this will be a section for people who evaluate Drupal. Essentially, this will be a set of high-quality marketing materials. Right now, we don't really have good marketing content on the website. The one we do have is in book pages, and it's not really too exciting or engaging, for that matter. So this section would have content about Drupal, about history, about features, technical marketing materials, um, high-quality case studies, potentially official Drupal blog, that sort of thing. Another example is community. So community, uh, right now we do have a page which is called, uh, which has URL community and it's sort of just static page of text. Um, we want to create an actual section which will be a place to find and talk to Drupal community. Uh, it will include things like listing of users, uh, listing of organizations, and we mean all organizations, so service providers, hosting providers, trainer providers, as well as end users, or really any company which has some relation to Drupal and wants to create an organization page. Um, this section will also include local and interest user groups, which means we will migrate them from groups.drupal.org into the main website. Um, this gives us ability to connect it more tightly to the rest of the content we have, and also lessen burden of maintenance a bit, because we'll have one less uh, separate website to maintain, in addition to other advantages. Um, the other thing which can be included here is community showcase, so a place for people to show off Drupal websites they build, um, things like that. Contribute section. Um, this section will highlight all the ways you can contribute to the project and how to get started doing so. Initiatives, the content type I mentioned earlier, will live here, so people will be able to see what are all the active initiatives right now, what's going on, how you can involve, get involved and start helping with some of those. Uh, mostly, uh, current content for this section lives in Getting Involved Guide, so essentially what we want to do is take this content and present it in a much more engaging way than just a set of book pages. Um, I think that's enough examples. I can talk more about sections if anyone is interested after the talk, but uh, now a little bit about how we actually are building this. So behind the scenes, uh, each section will be an organic group. Now, I want to say right away, they will not look or work exactly like groups on groups.drupal.org right now. That is the Drupal 6 side. They will be much better. <laughs> In most cases, uh, nothing will really show to the end user that particular section of the site is an organic group if they don't need to know about it. Um, and building sections as groups gives us all the things we talked about, the things we need. Uh, so various types of content can be created inside of a section. We can have maintainers and editors for a section. We can have notification on uh, content changes and content can be added to multiple sections if needed. Well, obviously all of the things I talked about today is very big undertaking and it won't be done in like a week or even two weeks. So we already started. Uh, and I will give a little update on our progress on the actual implementation of all of these changes. So first of all, we obviously presented our findings and collected some uh, feedback from the community. We did presentations for working groups. Uh, we had a session at DrupalCon Los Angeles. Everything I talked about is published in the issue queues. Uh, I will give a set of uh, links to issues if you want to read more. Uh, we also published blog posts on the association website, tweets, etc. To visualize all the recommendations, at least for ourselves, and make it easier to talk about these things, we built a sort of a future state sitemap for Drupal.org, which is like a huge Google drawing. This is a screenshot, probably not really uh, easily readable, but it's a huge thing, and it's obviously not final yet. We are going to verify some of our ideas about locations and titles for things uh, by doing things like card sorting exercises, for example. Um, so it might change. Another work uh, we, we were doing is sort of translating these high-level ideas about content strategy into what are the actual things we need to build. And we are doing this by writing a set of user stories, really, a lot of them. Uh, this is a screenshot from one of our numerous spreadsheets. So you can see on the very left sort of a 
big user story which describes the whole section by Drupal. Uh, what we've done is we built all the content strategy recommendations into a set of those big user stories so that we could prioritize them uh, with the working groups and say, here are the sections we are going to build first and this will come next. Then uh, we build those big user, uh, we break uh, those big user stories into smaller ones based on different user personas or different types of activity happening in the section. And then we break them even smaller into sort of individual tasks people perform so that we can actually talk what are the features we need to build to support all those scenarios. And uh, this is ongoing work, obviously, to write it all down for all the section takes some time, so we're just going slowly one by one, uh, depending on the priority of the sections. Um, in parallel with that, we were sort of preparing the plumbing for this whole thing. So we identified the minimal set of modules needed to enable this structural change on the website. Then we built integration server, which is a complete copy of production infrastructure, so that we could actually test it heavily before we deploy anything. We've done lots of performance testing to make sure we won't terribly slow the website and things like that. And results were positive, so we actually deployed initial set of modules on Drupal.org already. So we do have organic groups on Drupal.org and we do have uh, section content type. So we can start actually building new sections. And the first two sections we'll be focusing on are uh, wide Drupal and documentation. Our communications team, well, mainly our content strategist Bradley, <laughs> is now really focusing on wide Drupal. So he's working on things like uh, messaging framework, what are the actual messages we want to tell people uh, in that section, as well as wireframing some of the possible pages uh, which will live inside of it. At the same time, we started working on the documentation section. Uh, and we started by working with the stakeholders. Uh, in this case, uh, they are the documentation working group. So we wanted to really make sure whatever goals, priorities, and ideas they have will match really well to what we are building. So uh, we've done sort of an online workshop with uh, documentation working group members for like about four hours uh, when we talked through each uh, user story to get agreement on what exactly that means, what will be the steps people will take to achieve certain goals. And uh, screenshot here, again, it's a huge wall of post-its which we created in the Google drawing because we all are all over the place. We can't really be in the same room. So it's, it's a very huge Google drawing. Yeah, screenshot can't really show all the beauty of it, but I will give you URL if you want to see. So right now, uh, the team um, in the association is working through actual implementation details for what are the features we need to build to support those uh, user stories for the documentation section. And um, the huge part of work for the documentation section specifically will be content audit and migration. We have right now 12,000 documentation pages on Drupal.org, and we have about four staff people, I think I'm imagining four, maybe less, who can actually work on this. So it will take us a really, really long time. If you want to help us this Friday, you can come uh, to Sprints, and we will be doing audit of the current documentation on Drupal.org. It will start at 11 uh, a.m. room 114. So. If you want to help with content strategy, this is the best place to do it right now. Now, while I still have a little voice left, I want to say thanks to various people who helped us during this whole thing. Um, obviously, content working group members like George over here and uh, Roy, Jeff, our Marcom team, um, Forum One, Courtney, Michaela, Christina, all the other working groups uh, who supported us and staff members and community members who provided us feedback, um, which was really helpful. As I said, here are some links you can see in the slides later. Those are the actual issues about everything I talked about today, essentially. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. So if anyone has any questions, there's a mic over there, so feel free to ask. Yeah. 
Hello. I have two questions. Um, one is just out of curiosity. Um, 1.2 million pages. How on earth did you start your content audit or, you know, to find the different types of content? Well, we kind of did database queries to get numbers, actually. We didn't look at every single page, obviously. And it's really, I mean, you can imagine how long it will take us. So what we do instead, we will do it section by section. So right now we're working on documentation. So we will do the uh, audit of documentation pages only. It's 12,000, so it's a little less. Uh, next, we'll work on something else. We'll take whatever is relevant for that new section and we'll do audit there. Because, I mean, we will just be locked in a room doing audit for weeks if we just wanted to do it, which is not really uh, realistic. Uh, I think the other question I've got is just out of curiosity. Um, I've been involved with sort of personas and content strategy work and then also using um, personalization, you know, to actually look and check your hypotheses that, you know, people are certain types of people like, you know, novices or people that you identify as being experts are looking at certain things. Are you sort of thinking about hooking that in at some point, you know, using things like Lyft so you can actually, you know, look at what your, your personas are and sort of see what's happening on Drupal.org? Yeah, that would be that would be really interesting. We are thinking about some ways to at least identify those people because like there is no field on user profile to say yes, I'm an expert or I'm a master, and it's also hard because it changes over time. But perhaps some sort of survey or something to at least be able to see, you know, we actually have 50% of masters or something would be really helpful. We don't have anything right now in Drupal door to do that, but hopefully in future. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, any more questions? Damn it, I thought I explained everything so good. So you were talking about um, the project grouping, if you will, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I saw that there was documentation in that subgroup. Yep. Is, uh, maybe I was, which wasn't quite following, but is documentation going to be a little bit more accessible from, like, say, project pages? Yes, definitely. Yes, okay, definitely. I guess because... Managing projects as something that has been rel relatively very difficult, and um, like how ex um, I can talk to you later, but I just was curious like, are there also going to be like forums for like support for projects as well, or is that going to be something completely different? We haven't thought about that yet because uh, support section, when, once we did this, that prioritization, support section was kind of lower down, so we didn't really do much thinking about it. Okay. Perhaps. Um, in the future, we might add Q&A content type, and that can be available in the project, so you can have like sort of section for Q&A about this project specifically, okay. if we want to. Okay, any more questions? Hooray! <laughs> I guess I explained it well. Thank you very much for coming.